Ever wonder how a simple shell script could take down your entire system? And by simple, we're talking like seven lines here. Routine stuff. Stuff that shouldn't be causing an outage literally hours before the holiday weekend. We were scrambling. We had no time. No solution. No idea what we were going to do. It's not easy out there. Never was. Every day, expectations increase. The complexity only grows. And it can too often feel like you're flying blind. But what if you had more control? What if you could see every detail, more context, and more clarity, so you can fix faster and ship faster with greater confidence? That's the advantage of New Relic. It's the data you need, delivered as a service. It's instrumentation for everything, in your data center and in the cloud. It's every connection and customer interaction, monitored in real time. Only our cloud-based platform can help you quickly solve problems today and arm you with insights to stay ahead of problems tomorrow. It's not just attributes, it's answers. From instrumentation to intelligence, we help you see more, know more, react more quickly, all in ways that matter, well, more. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Erica Schultz, our Executive Vice President, Worldwide Sales. Turn it up! Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back. Welcome to day two. I'm Erica Schultz, and I lead global sales and customer success for New Relic. And it is such an honor to work with all of you and have you here with us this week. What an incredible day we had yesterday. It's going to be hard to top it today, but we'll do our best. I loved hearing about how instrumentation and intelligence are helping so many of our customers and the leaders within our customer base drive real business transformation. So we'll talk more about that today. But first, how was that party last night? I illuminate. Was that fun? What a fun concept, and I loved, um, loved all the lights and having Lou on stage. That was a blast. That was, we're going to have to figure out a way to get more, more LED lights into our, our daily routine. That was a lot of fun. So it will be hard to top yesterday today, but like I said, we'll do our best. Um, we have a great program lined up this morning. Um, in a few moments, we'll hear from a couple more customers, and we'll hear how instrumentation and intelligence are helping our customers at GE and Jet.com drive real business transformation at those companies. And we'll hear from our very own Chief Product Officer, Jim Gochi, about New Relic's own transformation. We couldn't have two better companies with us today to talk about the dis how they're disrupting market markets, excuse me, and um, how these leaders are driving truly transformational change. So first, I'd like to welcome my first guest, CK Rao from GE Digital. CK, please come on out. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Have a seat. Excellent. All right. So CK is the Senior Director of Digital Operations at GE, and GE is undergoing a massive transformation, which CK will tell us a little bit more about. Um, G CK's team at GE is a big part of this company's transformation, uh, digital transformation, and his team was brought in to help standardize monitoring to get that standard instrumentation and intelligence across the organization to help drive this really important transformation. Um, thousands of his team members are users of New Relic, which we're very proud of, and we're so excited to have him on stage today to tell us about what's going on at GE. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, Erica. Yeah, great to have you. So maybe as a refresher, can you um, share a little bit about what's going on at GE? Sure, sure. You know, transformation is the key for GE. Um, as you know, GE was started uh, by Thomas Alva Edison about 125 years ago. Since then, GE business grew into different uh, areas like healthcare, aviation, you know, oil and gas, transportation, and so on. So as the business transformed into different areas of uh, businesses, you know, uh, we also started a, a software company a couple of years before, which is called GG Digital. You know, um, GG Digital is providing the services for Internet of Things, industrial Internet of Things, right? As part of that mission, GG Digital also has a, a, a vision to transform the IT operations across all businesses. So last year, I was bought by my boss, Habib Sarkis, and his boss, Chris Drumgol, and Jim Fowler, to identify the opportunities across all IT operations across all the businesses 
with respect to people, process, technology, and governance, and then transform this into a, a better place. So that's why I'm here. Fantastic. What an exciting mission. Yeah, that's it great. is. It is. Um, tell us about the role that New Relic plays sure. in your transformation. Sure. You know, as the saying goes, if you don't explain it well enough, you don't understand it well enough, right? So th this, this perfectly applies for monitoring. So we can have a nice dashboards with the nice graphs and nice statistics, but if it can't detect an issue, if it, it can't resolve a production issue, then it's, it's of no use. So I came up with two goals for the team. The first one is we need to have, when you develop a monitoring tool or monitoring solution, it should have a predictive analytics capability to identify an issue before it becomes an outage, major outage. That is number one. And the number two is, let's say you can't, monitoring tool uh, did not solve the issue, then it should have, a, you know, it should have automation and SOPs, and it should have capability to at least point to the place where the issue is, right? With these two goals, um, you know, team worked with uh, uh, um, um, several of several businesses, development teams, DevOps teams. But you know, when we met with Neuralink team, you know, uh, we gave these goals to uh, Neuralink as well because my team goals is my vendors goals as well. And uh, I'm glad to say that today, uh, about 62% of the incidents are are detected by the monitoring tools like Neuralink. So Fantastic. Neuralink is helping uh, a lot for GE, and uh, thanks for the great partnership. Fantastic. No, and likewise, it's, it's been an um, extremely exciting partnership for us. Um, and as you tell us more about as, as your team is driving to more of a standard, have there been some aha moments that have really illustrated the power of what we're talking about? Sure, sure. I mean, transformation is not fun if you don't have aha moments, right? <laughs> so we had, we had several aha moments for sure. I will take one um, that uh, happened recently, a couple of months ago. Uh, we have this application called Single Sign-On, so, which means in uh, about 300,000 employees of GE, they need to use that application to log into their other applications to do their day-to-day -day jobs. So um, my boss, Habib, came to me and, and asked me that, give me an end-to-end -end visibility of this application, because this is mission critical. If an incident happens on this one, it's, it's called P0, priority zero incident, which means all hands on deck. It has to be resolved within 15 minutes. So with that goal in mind, um, I, uh, uh, I approach Irene from Neuralink and say, hey, I have this goal. I don't have the visibility on the infrastructure, but I have the visibility on the app side, for sure. But I want to get the visibility on the infrastructure. Can you help us? And then she said, yeah, why not? We have a Neuralink infrastructure component available. And then she gave me the license. And then we implemented uh, uh, the monitoring for storage, compute, network. And then I'm glad to say that now I have the visibility from starting to end, you know, not, not only from the browser to the middleware to the database, but also to the infrastructure side on the compute storage and uh, network. Fantastic. So that is aha moment, not only for my team. So when I provide this visibility to my businesses, you know, they were, they were very happy. There were a couple of instances where I reached out to business saying that, hey, we found this issue, we resolved it, everything is good. So instead of they calling us for any incidents, I'm going there and telling them that we had an issue, we solved it. That is powerful. That is an aha moment for yeah, me. That's powerful. And we all know how important single sign-on is exactly, in our yeah. daily lives. So that's, right. that's exciting. Great. I know that um, another key element of your transformation is about moving to the cloud sure. and uh, in broad cloud adoption. Um, what, tell us more about that and what considerations have been important to you as you've brought in partners in that realm. Right. So we have several data centers. G has several data centers for sure. Uh, but the, as part of the transformation, our goal is also going to SaaS model. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have uh, our own cloud. It's, it's called GIX. So we have lots of applications going there. But we also partner with other cloud uh, vendors like AWS, mm -hmm. right? So when we talk to the development teams, you know, our goal for them is to develop in such a way that they can run anywhere not just the data centers, not just in one box, right? So that goal is already there for the uh, new applications. But we're also trying to uh, um, migrate the existing applications into the cloud-based model. Mm -hmm. So the cloud is very important. And as part of this, you know, one of the reasons that we have selected uh, Neuralic as the monitoring tool was it is a SaaS-based solution. 
because it is aligning with our SaaS uh, strategy. So that's why you know we went with uh, a SaaS based solution, and uh, you know the strategy is going well. Okay. Yeah. That's great. That's great. So a big, big commitment to the big cloud from yes. GE. Yes, yeah. yes. Fantastic. Well, what's next for you? What's next for you in, in GE Digital? Um, again, the trans uh, transformation has uh, um, a huge journey, yeah. right? My goal is to have a single pane of glass for each application. And my goal is to tell the businesses before they even they come back to me that, you know, we have an incident, we resolved it, versus they calling us saying, hey, what's going on, yeah. right? So that, that is my uh, major goal. And then we also want to uh, uh, implement uh, monitoring for the critical applications like Sable, which is we, which we were still working on it. So there's a lot, a lot going on, but you are getting there. We are enjoying the transformation. Yeah, fantastic. Well, we've really enjoyed our partnership with you. We're very grateful for that. And it's been so inspiring to watch the bold transformation that GE has taken on and is making great progress with. Sure. So thank you thank for you. sharing the story. Thank, thank you, you, CK. Thank yep. you. Thank you See so you. much. You. That's great. So inspiring to see a, the company, a company the size and scale of GE take on such a bold transformation, but really exciting to watch. Um, and speaking of large companies undergoing big transformation and speaking of disrupting markets, let me welcome our next guest, Leo Gordinsky from Jet.com. Leo. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Have a seat. All right. Um, well, welcome, Leo. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah, great to have you. Um, a little bit of an introduction of Jet.com. Certainly when we think of modern disruptors, Jet is a, one of the first names that comes to mind. The company is only three years old, which is actually hard to imagine, and is already giving the incumbent market leader uh, in e-commerce a run for its money, which must be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and uh, as we all know, Jet.com was recently acquired by Walmart. So big disruption going on now within the broader company. Um, Leo is Jet's VP of Engineering and will talk to us a little bit today about what it takes for their team to continue to wow their customers and disrupt the market at a breakneck pace. So let's get into it. Um, first, maybe Leo, by way of introduction, can you talk a little bit about uh, what it's taken for your teams and technologies to move fast at scale uh, without compromising customer experience? Yeah, so um, uh, early on we knew we needed to scale. And uh, I think it's because our leader, Mark Laurie, certainly knew how to inspire us. And we always had this feeling that this was going to be something big. And uh, we knew we needed to scale. Uh, and in terms of uh, scale, in terms of the load and the traffic the system had to handle, but also in terms of the organization that was going to be operating uh, this system. And, uh, and so to that end, we designed for modularity uh, in terms of our units of deployment, so microservices, and also in terms of the interaction between these microservices. And uh, for that, we designed a very event-centric architecture, very decoupled. Um, and, and so as a result, we had a lot of moving parts. We had a lot of components operating independently. But that also means that they can malfunction uh, independently. And, um, uh, and this is where instrumentation comes in. It gives us the visibility, the intelligence that we need to operate uh, the system of this sort. That's great. I can uh, only imagine the challenges associated with the scale and the pace that you're operating at. Um, tell us more about the trajectory from the early days to now being part of Walmart, mm -hmm. and um, tell us more about the launch and the role of New Relic. Yeah, so um, uh, as I look at our trajectory, one of the things the engineering team is quite proud of is that we haven't really had to change our architecture, because at the onset we designed for modularity, and as, uh, as we scaled, as the company grew, uh, what we really had to do is replace some of the components uh, to allow them to scale. Um, and uh, this same uh, modularity uh, and uh, focus on instrumentation is what's now making the uh, integration with the larger Walmart organization a bit more smooth. Um, and of course, uh, uh, launch uh, is uh, something we talk about a lot. Now, nowadays, it was quite exciting times. Uh, the weeks uh, leading up to launch were sort of like a big uh, blur. We were all focused uh, on, uh, on launching. We, as an engineering team, we were worried. We didn't think we were quite ready. And uh, 
uh, I remember having a, a conversation with uh, Mark Laurie, our CEO, and he says like, yeah, I think, I think we're ready. And I'm like, yeah, okay, okay, all right. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> but, but we made it through and uh, we, were, we were glued to those uh, New Relic dashboards during launch day. Um, and, and we made we made it through. We got a lot more traffic than we anticipated. We knew we were going to get a lot of traffic, but uh, we got quite a bit more than than we expected, and uh, the systems were able uh, to hold. Uh, and we certainly wouldn't be able to do it without uh, instrumentation. Wow, that's great. That's um, exciting. I can. Only, that's uh, a big moment of truth. Um, so, why is operating at this pace important to Jet.com and your customers? And and what advantage does it give you? So uh, at the end of the day, we have to keep in mind that we're building a product for our customers. And uh, along with that comes a great deal of responsibility. Um, if uh, it means building a reliable service, it means b building a responsive service. And if we can ship features more quickly, ship bug fixes more quickly, this is a top priority for us. Um, and, so, um, and, and so having this visibility is what makes this uh, process uh, possible. Uh, having uh, fast releases uh, and, and quick uh, changes allows to adapt uh, to, uh, to our envi uh, environment. Great, and offer a better customer experience is, is exactly. an outcome. Exactly. Um, what role has New Relic played beyond the launch throughout this period of growth? So uh, we started using New Relic well before uh, we launched. We wanted to really embed this kind of thinking uh, early on into our development process. We wanted to have it be part of our DNA. Um, and so, of course, we, we use New Relic during launch, but uh, today, uh, teams at Jet use New Relic every day. They use that uh, to, to monitor their system. It's always displayed on a screen uh, next, to, next to a team uh, at, uh, at Jet. So we use it every day. Uh, of course, we're very uh, especially glued to those dashboards on uh, critical days for, for e-commerce, which, you know, of course, it was the launch day for us, but the uh, uh, holiday shopping season that's coming up is uh, uh, also going to be another one of those days. Like, I recall uh, the first uh, holiday season, the second holiday season we went through, uh, we turned our boardroom into this uh, operational war room where we lined the walls with uh, displays, displaying all sorts of dashboards, everyone huddled around. Uh, over the weekend uh, for uh, for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and so on. Oh, great. Uh, that's a good strategy. Um, I know that another important part of your environment is Microsoft Azure. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit more about how you've leveraged that platform to help with the scaling. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so uh, we've uh, used Azure since uh, the very beginning. And uh, of course, Azure gives you uh, a virtually unlimited set of resources. And this was important for us because we wanted to uh, be able to scale and build and evolve our systems on demand without having to manage a warehouse, without having to make that investment. Um, but of course, once you have this unlimited set of resources, they can all fail. That's uh, almost a sure fact in the cloud that th things are going to fail. And, um, uh, and so it takes uh, a paradigm shift to be able to uh, operate thousands of machines rather than just one machine. You can't look at an individual machine anymore. You have to sort of take a step back and look at this information in aggregate. You have to be able to anticipate failures. You have to be able to alert on failures. Uh, and that all has to be part of uh, your thinking, your development process. Yeah, great. And they've been a great partner for you, I know. Absolutely. Um, so as part of your success, as we mentioned, you were acquired by Walmart. Mm -hmm. How has that impacted things? And um, how has it impacted how you share your uh, application and infrastructure performance data? Mm -hmm. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, having this focus on SLAs uh, and having this focus on modularity is something that made the transition and uh, the integration with teams at Walmart a lot more smooth. Uh, and of course, metrics and visibility are even more critical in a large organization like uh, Walmart's. Um, and I remember before the acquisition, there was a big tech audit that kind of looked at our technology to, to make sure it's, it's up to their standards. And that's something they were very impressed with. They told us we were running a very tight ship. Uh, and uh, I can attest that to uh, our focus on instrumentation, uh, our focus on making sure all these metrics are visible. Excellent, great. I'm sure that was a, um, a really strategic component, in fact, of, uh, of what they saw. Um, how important is real time and the agility and access to data in real time to the way that you operate? It's, uh, it's absolutely important. Uh, our, sh uh, our customers are uh, shopping in real time. 
and, and we have to be there in uh, real time with them. We have to respond to things that happen uh, on demand. Our customers are shopping in real time. We have uh, uh, bots that are try trying to attack us in real time. We have to respond to those circumstances. The, the cloud uh, that Azure provides for us consists of uh, many individual components that fail in real time. So we have to, we have to be able to respond in real time. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, well, final question. So when you think about what's up next for you and your team at Jet, what are you most excited about? What, uh, what I'm most excited about is that we're now in a position to collaborate with the larger Walmart organization. Uh, we have the ability to take what we've done at Jet uh, and uh, bring it into the larger organization at, uh, at Walmart. And we've had the, the fortune of being able to start uh, a sort of a greenfield project uh, just a few years ago, we were able to take all these ideas, all this research that's been done into account and kind of embedded directly into our systems. Uh, and uh, right now, Walmart, in many ways, are looking to us to, to, to help them bring some of these ideas to, to their organization. So that's one of the things I'm excited about. Uh, and on, on the technology front, what we continue uh, looking to do is to embed uh, SLAs and metrics uh, into our systems by construction. And uh, what I mean by that is we're, we're all accustomed to being able to, by construction, specify that uh, a certain service returns data in a specific format, like JSON, that it adheres to a schema. But we'd like to take that to a next level and assure that a service uh, adheres to a, a service level agreement, that it has certain latency constraints, uptime constraints, and if it fails to adhere to those constraints, we want to fail fast, we want to be notified, alerted, and uh, we want uh, that component to short circuit so that it doesn't uh, take the larger system down as a whole. Yeah, great, exciting. Well, exci it's been an exciting three years and exciting times ahead, I have no doubt. So thank you so much for joining us and sharing your story. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. Great. Great. Fantastic. All right, well, we have one more story to hear about uh, a company who is also disrupting markets and transforming rapidly as we do that. Um, allow me to welcome Jim Gochi, New Relic's own chief product officer, to tell the New Relic story. Jim, come on out. <laughs> welcome. Oh, we get a hug. All right. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Glad you could be here. I'm just Thank kidding. It's, as our chief product officer, of course, we're thrilled to have you here. Um, but uh, in all seriousness, um, Jim and his organization are a fantastic partner to me and to my organization and all of our customers and partners. Um, so it's, it's great to be able to peek inside what's going on at New Relic with this conversation. Um, we, uh, you know, Jim and I work um, closely together and often travel out to meet with customers together to understand the needs of the market. And you all give us a lot of feedback, and it's, it's very helpful for us to hear that feedback together so we can take it back and, and action it within the company. Um, and I know from working with, with Jim that, um, you know, you're passionate about so many of the same things that our customers are, is mm -hmm. you're running a, a large That's right. uh, product organization and, and uh, looking at engineering culture and DevOps practices and all of those things. So, um, so let's get into the story. Yeah, well, yeah. I think I'm at the right conference because I like to go fast. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> With confidence. Right, right. That's uh, great. So I'm in the right place. But um, you know, we've we've had uh, we've had an incredible run for the last nine and a half years. Yeah. And the uh, Lou showed that scaling slide that that showed this, the scale in data, um, and that was a challenge. You know, and at each stage of scale, uh, we had organizational scale issues that went along with that, and, and I'm sure many of our customers also experienced that, right? Uh, when you start out and you have a couple of teams or even one team, it's really easy to be agile and to move fast. Then maybe you get to a certain size and you can't feed everybody with, uh, with, with uh, two pizzas. <laughs> so you break the team up. Uh, then you have two teams, then you have four teams, then you have eight teams, right? And, and I clearly remember the point at which, because one of our investors asked me, he's like, have you hit that size yet where all work has stopped? And I was like, what is this guy talking about? Um, and, then we, and then we sort of did. We, we hit the size where there were, I think there were about uh, 40 teams, and the, the, the dependencies and the interconnects between those teams was this friction, mm. right? This, this glue that was like slowing everything down. 
Yeah. Um, and it was very frustrating for, for our teams. Uh, I would say like our, our throughput or our velocity slowed down and people were working harder to try to keep up, but not having the outcomes that, that we wanted. Um, and that's when we knew we had to do something different and something that turned out to be pretty bold. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you did. Now, that's not a, a great point to get to, um, but it, your response to that was pretty interesting. So yes. you and your leadership team uh, led what would be viewed by many as a pretty risky and controversial um, change across the organization when you um, get this held an internal career fair for your organization, for the entire product and engineering team. And uh, tell us more about that. Yeah, well, there were several things that we did, and uh, by far the thing that gets the most attention is this thing called self-selection, uh, where we everybody uh, kind of lost their job and then had to reapply for, for their job, uh, which was pretty cool. But Lee... Le <laughs> Sounds a little scary. <laughs> we, we thought it was a good idea. First of all, uh, what we did was very bold, and we have a very bold CEO, and, and so that, that really worked well. Yeah. Um, and I went to Lou and I said, we're going to have to make a number of changes, uh, here's, here's what we want to do. We want to break dependencies between teams. We want to clean up information flow so that all teams are always aligned with the business priorities. So clear information flow about what work to be done. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, cut down the number of projects in flight. And we're going to swarm and we're going to focus on a smaller number of things to get higher velocity. And everybody gets to pick a new team. <laughs> So, um, and that last part, we were a little surprised how, uh, how much anxiety it, uh, it created um, amongst the team members, but really what we, what we, um, we worked with a consultant and, and he said, look, it's kind of a puzzle. High-performing teams are kind of a puzzle. And usually management tries to solve this puzzle by moving people between teams and sort of seeing what works and what doesn't. And he, he kind of had this philosophy, he's, uh, he's from the Agile community, and he said, uh, let the team solve this puzzle for themselves. Yeah. And so what you do is you, you we had a career fair where we had 46 tables, because at that time we were going to have 46 teams. At each table was a clear articulation of what the team was responsible for. We also had um, business constraints. These are the skill sets needed. This is the minimum number of people that have to be on this team. Um, and then we spent a day where people shuffled around, sort of looked at different teams, uh, and they solved the puzzle for us. We, wow. Yeah, we, everybody got mapped to a team, uh, so people got to choose where they wanted to work. 40% of people chose a new team to be on, 60% stayed on the team they were at, right? But it's a little bit like, um, you know, sort of opt in again. Yeah, so I'm I'm going to recommit yeah. if, if I even stay on the team that I'm on. And so these teams are highly energized with a clear mission statement um, and clear lines of communication. And this was this was a just a transformational yeah. change for us as an organization. I'll bet. Yeah, we did it all at once too. Yeah. Which, as bold as Lou is, he had a little bit of consternation about this. <laughs> yeah, no, it was uh, it was exciting. Um, how? How did you ensure that you had coverage across all the teams and, and uh, focus areas that you needed? And that, how did you ensure that the new organization still matched the needs of the market and the needs of the business? Well, and this is a bit tricky. So as an agile organization, um, we don't exactly know where, where we're going to have to focus our time in the next year or two. So we, we do expect um, there has to be some amount of flex in the org. But you know, we, we, have, we have a certain technology base, we have products, we have platform components such as NRDB, um, and we know, we know we have to staff those. We also know some of the bigger initiatives and we have to, and we have to staff those. So you sort of have to put people um, by investment level in areas and you're, you're kind of taking a guess at it. And in many ways, you don't really know team size because team size is often not a perfect predictor of velocity. Sometimes smaller teams can actually move faster Mm -hmm. than larger teams. Um, so we, we took our best get, guess at it, expecting like anything else that's agile, we were going to have to iterate on it once it got going. Yeah. And I'm a firm believer of that. You cannot plan these things out because you can't plan out the needs of the market. Right. Needs of the market translate to the product. Right. Product translates to engineers uh, need to do work. Yeah. So you can't ever plan that perfectly. So you do the best you can, um, and then you expect to be agile and, and iterate. That's great, which I know you and the team have continued to be. Um, and you've called this project upscale. 
correct? Yes. So, so how has Project Upscale impacted where New Relic is today? Well, it's had a huge impact on our ability to ship features. And so one of the things you'll notice at FeatureStack is we had 37 uh, announcements, 37 features uh, we're announcing at the conference, which, Amazing. Is, which is a tremendous number. Yeah, it's incredible velocity. Yeah, it is. And if we, if we look at FeatureStack a couple of years ago, uh, in comparison, we were nowhere near that point. So, I, you know, it, it's taken us a little while to sort of do the reorg and, and get our legs under us with it, um, but the results have been outstanding. Yeah. And not only that, we're more, we're more agile as an organization. So we, dem uh, we demoed distributed tracing yesterday. We're very excited about distributed tracing. Uh, hopefully the audience is as well here. And that wasn't even on our radar six weeks ago. Six weeks ago? That's right. Wow, amazing. Yeah, and so we were able to pivot very, very quickly uh, and get several teams had to coordinate on distributed tracing. So it's not just like you know one team does the work. Uh, we had our you know user interface team, and the, but our data team also had to participate as well as some of our agent teams to do that. That's incredible. Um, and that that agility at scale uh, would not have been possible prior to upscale. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, so what's next? Where do you go next? Yeah, well, I get, I get asked this question a lot. You know, we do show roadmaps, although it always gives me a little bit of heartburn, given that we're an agile organization, to, to, to show a roadmap. But, uh, you know, one of the things that's really important to us is, is we engage with our customers on, on defining that roadmap. So we held our very first customer advisory board meeting this summer, and, uh, and we created a concept called Lou Bucks, where we gave them some money, fake money, and, and asked them to vote. You know, where, where should we spend our time? And this, this was a great exercise because it really helped us align our thinking in terms of what the market or what our customers uh, were asking yeah. us for. So, you know, we have a number of things that came out of it. The first is APIs everywhere. Uh, we know in a DevOps world that's really important. Uh, many of our customers are creating internal platforms where they would like to automate account provisioning or things like dashboard creation or alert creation so they can script that all out. Um, another thing is uh, better usage reporting, not only of how much New Relic they're using in certain environments, but what are their own uh, employees using within New Relic. That's an opportunity to see uh, where they could do some internal training or promote features of the product that may not be well understood. Excellent. Yep, cross-account um, dashboards or just anything that's like cross-account because our larger customers tend to have multiple accounts. Um, but again, because we're an agile organization, and we're responsive to the needs of the market, and we listen to our customers. You know, it could be, it could be, uh, new things could show up on that list. Yeah, fantastic. It's always very exciting. That's great. Well, what a bold initiative on the part of you and your leadership team, and what a fantastic outcome. The velocity is really impressive. Yeah. Thank um, you. Yeah, and I, I think we have a video that we can roll that talks a little bit more about uh, Project Upscale. If we can roll the video. <laughs> A happy engineer is a more productive engineer. They'll write better code faster. And that's really what we're after, is we want that to happen. New Relic's always had that culture that said, look, we want you to enjoy the work you do. We want you to love your Mondays. When I took over the chief product officer role, I talked to a lot of people, a lot of engineers. Consistently, the feedback I heard is it was too difficult to get things done. So what we're doing is we're reorganizing the engineering groups to put people into these full ownership teams where we can and bring those dispersed interests of specialists who might have been in six different teams beforehand all together so that a team has everything they need right there to get the job done. We decided to move forward with the self-selection as a way of forming new teams because it really gives individuals a lot of autonomy. Not a lot of companies are doing things this self-directed with experiments at this level. Only a handful in the industry at all would, would even consider this. And so even if you're a front-end developer but there's a team you really want to work with, you can go learn something completely new and that's really cool that New Relic is willing to give its employees that opportunity. We're a product company that happens to have technology as a product. And we need to be product first and product forward. And I think that this is really going to get us there, not only by shifting engineers into the spots that they want to be in and can do their best work in, but by getting the entire company behind the same set of goals. Upscale is the boldest move we could possibly have made to transform the organization. What we're doing in New Relic Engineering not only from a product perspective, but how we do our work is state-of-the-art. That's 
great. <laughs> Good. Fantastic. Well, thanks, Jim, for sharing the story. And um, that concludes our morning session. So thank you again to Ray, to CK, to Leo, to Jim for sharing the inspiring stories. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of the day.